Claudia, I want to be an au pair and I know that I have to write a letter to a potential host family and it's really a challenge for me to find the balance between bragging about myself and then letting them know that I am a great person because I want to work with them and I also want to take care of their kids, which is very important to them. And then I find it very, very difficult, even more difficult than the bragging about myself if I should keep it informal or formal because it, it is somewhat an application but then also you want to live with them. Like it's a job and you're living in their house. So I find it very hard to find the combination where, where, start, where, where should I start with my professional experience and then also talk about myself. Absolutely, Clara. So what I understand is that it is a very daunting task when you think about what am I going to write in my letter to a potential host family. But actually, it's a really great opportunity when you think of all the pieces that already have gone into your application and you know you address your professional experience it's all in bullet points and and this letter actually gives you the opportunity to show what your personality is and start building that relationship with a potential future host family and i think that's where you have the opportunity where you really can make the most out of it because in the end the families are going to be looking for someone they can also connect with on a personal level outside of all the great professional experience that you have so i want to go through um, sort of a structure of how you can uh, set up your personal letter and uh, you know touch on all the different bullet points that you could address in your personal letter to make it as complete as it can be without talking too much about one thing and, and your concern was the bragging part um, to leave out that part but yet still highlight your professional experience. So one thing that you can uh, definitely start with is just a little bit of an introduction about yourself. Think about um, the family setting that you have back in your home country. Do you still live with your own family? Do you live on your own? What's the setting that you find yourself in? And also uh, very interesting for a future host family is to know the value that you put on family life. So you may want to talk about how much time you spend with your own family and maybe the inclusion of you know, distant uh, relatives or your direct relatives, nephews, cousins that you may be taking care of. So that's always very interesting to just for the family get an overview of what your life at home would look like. Now that I know that I want to be a professional pair, do you think a potential host family would want to know about my motivation that was behind that? Absolutely. So if you think about why a host family would want to have an au pair, then they definitely want to know why you want to be the au pair. So this is a great place for you to talk about all the experiences that you have had and your motivation to become an au pair. So think about was there anything in your past that um, all of a sudden maybe made you realize, I want to become a professional au pair and assist a host family in, in raising their uh, children and help them out maybe with uh, therapies uh, for a special needs child. So your motivation is really a really big aspect um, that they're interested in. So anytime that you can speak to why it is that uh, you have decided to become a professional au pair, absolutely it's very valuable uh, for the host family to understand that. So you were talking about the professional motivation. Can I also let them know about my personal motivation? For example, the the interest in the in the culture and in the intercultural exchange with the with another country and, and the family living there. So I think that your personal experiences and your desire to become part of the American way of life are just as important for a host family to understand who would want to welcome you into their American way of life. So it gives them an indication of how you would want to be integrated into the American life and how you want to participate in the family life and what you think that you can bring from your own culture uh, and enrich uh, their lives here in the, uh, in the United States. So personal experience and personal motivation, absolutely do talk about it because it gives them great insight into what it is that drives you and what it is that interests you in the American way of life. So, so we just discussed that you want to talk about your professional motivation, your personal motivation. So let's actually talk about your professional experience because that's a big, big part that is of interest to a host family. I mean, you know that you're not just any au pair, um, but you're a professional au pair. So you come with an educational background. You have a degree. In your case, uh, you're an occupational therapist. And it's, it's uh, amazing for a family to, to reap the benefits of somebody living with them that has a degree in one of those specialties. So do talk about 
obviously your degree. Then also, maybe there was something that happened during your um, educational training back in Germany in your case, that you thought, wow, if I could bring this uh, experience and all these great experiences that I had during my training over to the US and, and help a family, that's what I really would want to do. So professional background, your experience that you have had in your position back in Germany or during your training are very valuable for host family to know. Would I also enlist internships that I may have done in the direction of occupational therapy or um, summer camps, whatever, everything that has to do with my degree and my, my, my education? Yeah, obviously, the more experience you have, not just in your professional background, but also in taking care of children, and they could be, you know, children with special needs, children that do not have special needs, very, very good to know, because it just shows them the breadth of um, tasks and responsibilities that you can take on, that they could trust and trust their children, you know, into your hands and feel good about it pretty much any minute of the day, depending on what is needed, be it the therapy assistance that you could provide for, or if it was just, you know, having uh, a day out with the children in a park or taking them to museums and whatever else one can think of uh, just to entertain the children in their daily life. Um, very good to know. Do you think I should also include regular babysitting family members or other families in the neighborhood? Does it always have to be on the, the professional level? No, I don't think you have to exclude your personal experiences that you may have had with, you know, babysitting per se uh, in different families or even babysitting, you know, other family members that you have. Because all that does speak to uh, your experiences and your capabilities of taking care of uh, maybe even different age groups that you have experience with. So if, you know, if it's the very little ones that you've taken care of, that, that's, you know, peace of mind for a mom who has, you know, maybe newborns or, or a small toddler on their hand, or it could be the eight, nine, ten year olds who are out and about meeting friends um, and hanging out uh, with them. Think about my training as an occupational therapist. What details should I tell the family about? Yeah, so your degree as an occupational therapist in your case is really very valuable for the family because think about all the aspects that you've learned in your training as an occupational therapist. So talk about the responsibilities you have had in that position, maybe the age groups that you've worked with, uh, experiences with the age groups where you feel that you're really good at, also um, therapies that maybe you can assist with. Because think of all the aspects of um, your training as an occupational therapist and, and everything that you have learned. So maybe there are certain therapies that at this point you feel that you're really going to be good at. And um, talk about those therapies that you think you're specialized in and what it is that the experiences that you have that you think you can translate over to a, a family and, and helping them raising their children with special needs. That's very nice to know. Um, and not even just for an occupational therapist, the same goes for speech therapists, pediatric nurses, you know, that are really good at handling tiny little babies. And maybe those are premature babies. And if you were a pediatric nurse, you would want to talk about how good you are at handling those special cases. In the case of a preschool teacher, kindergarten teacher, I mean, they're like the entertainers of the world, right? Keeping a, a child entertained in a useful way, in an educational way all day long, that is quite a big challenge. So if you feel that you've got a really special talent there, do speak to that. So another thing, Clara, that you uh, may want to think about speaking to is, have you given it any thought what it is that you personally want to get out of this uh, year and how you envision your time in the US? I've thought about that a little, but what details would you think I should include in, in... So let's first talk about how you envision that you can support um, a family's needs and their lifestyle. Um, you know, it may be one thing for you to be, you know, have this dream to become a professional pair, but do talk about um, how realistic you are about it because chances are it's not always going to be um, a smooth ride um, in a family that, you know, maybe has several children that need to be taken care of or even a child with special needs that, you know, brings its own challenges with uh, therapy coordination and all that. So talk about how flexible you are, you know, your willingness to help and, and chip in uh, on a moment's notice uh, also if needed. Then of course the therapies that you have experiences with um, and that you would want to be integrated into the American uh, therapy system and maybe observe or participate in the therapies that the American therapy system may be, you know, delivering in, in home with the family. 
So other things that you also want to give some consideration is how do you react um, when things don't go the way as they were planned and actually how good are you in planning a day, you know, be it uh, for children and how you keep them entertained or what you think you, you can teach uh, children throughout the day. Also, maybe you're really good at preparing lunches or, you know, you, you have a fun way of doing a certain activity with children. All the other little things that, that support, you know, the lifestyle that a family has when they have children that need to be taken care of. And what about my personal goals? Well, I, I think one personal goal that everybody has coming to the United States is probably to improve upon their English skills. So that shouldn't be a surprise uh, for any host family. And usually, you know, they're all English speaking. They, they actually, there is a requirement that they have to be an English speaking uh, host family. But beyond that, you know, there's probably really uh, a lot of other things that attract you to the country. Maybe you have some travel plans, maybe you desire to go to a special place in the United States that you've always admired and have always wanted to visit. And also um, making friends, uh, American friends that is, not just other au pair friends, you know, that can enrich your life. So in order to participate in the American way of life, you know, how do you vision that you integrate yourself? What do you want to participate in that is the typical American lifestyle? Things like that is what the host family would understand so they can get an idea about how much it is that you would want to integrate yourself into the American way of life. So I have so many plants that I'd like to see in the States. I'm really curious about the country itself. Do you think I should talk um, about my free time, what I enjoy in my free time as well? Sometimes it's really the little details that tell them more about your personality and what it is that makes you you and, and why you think that you're special. Uh, so give them little insights in, into your, you know, what you like to do in your free time. You like to hang out with friends or maybe there's funny stories that somehow relate to your experience that you're looking forward to that you want to share with a potential host family. I mean, you know, this is just a guideline. You may always think of other things that, uh, that you want to speak to, but so generally you would talk about yourself and your introduction, then your motivation, uh, both on a professional basis as well as a personal basis, your professional background, your degree, your experiences there, also how you envision your year as an au pair and how you think it is that you can support a family, and then also, you know, what it is that you think you're going to be taken uh, home with you from that experience. And always think about it. You're addressing uh, a host family that you know doesn't know you so try to keep it in a conversational style don't use like bullet points just just write it uh, when it as it comes from your heart you know it's just you telling your story and and if you just you know tell your story as it is I think it'll come across very nicely and give a potential future host family a pretty good idea of what it is uh, that makes you you and and that you want to get out of this and how you can support their lifestyle <laughs>